guys. So, I have a little aim here today. I want to show you how to take one of these with a full-size crossfire module and particularly the one which has the Bluetooth in it um, to make that talk to that. And that's done with a lovely little chip called an HC05 module which I've got sitting inside here unopened in the box. So this is kind of a little bit of a higgledy piggledy video because I'm recording my screen for what I'm doing, I'm recording myself I kind of I don't know how it will all stitch together at the end so apologies if it turns into a bit of a mess but hopefully it will give you some clarity on how to do this. Now for those of you interested the reason you do this this MFD mini crossbow tracker is fantastic and what's particularly cool about it it receives data via Mavlink which means you can turn around and bind with the Bluetooth module to your crossfire and receive the telemetry information meaning that the tracker relies on the data link from your crossfire setup which is great makes life really easy so how do we do it let's um try give you a little bit of information here um, to start with the first thing we're going to have to do and let me get this box open here Whoa. i should have done this in advance you see essentially we are going to have to program our little module over here to talk to our crossfire so let me First off, I'm going to pop the radio on. No harm in doing that, is there? There we go. Lovely jumper starting up. And we have the module up, which means we have a Bluetooth connection. Now, what I've got over here, I've got a little Arduino setup over here. In fact, look at that. I've got another <laughs> HC05 module already plugged in because that's the kind of guy I am. So, I've got another video up on this which gives you all the commands you have to enter and I'll, I'll repaste them in this video below but needless to say what we've done is I've connected 5 volts to 5 volts ground to ground the 3.3 volts through to the EN pin the TX on the Arduino through to uh, blue to blue yeah TX to TX and RX to RX now that's going to boot the system up in effectively a bootloader mode and let me load this here up and I'm going to and you'll see on my screen here now I'm going to load up the Arduino interface and there we go nothing particularly wrong about that if it loads <laughs> I've done this very unprepared because I should have had everything out in an ideal way showing what was going on here so tools serial monitor well com six oh, I haven't plugged it in there we go give me a second if I plug in the USB over here. There we go. The Arduino's fired up. The chip's fired up. Tools. Serial monitor. There we go. And I'm going to say, okay, auto scroll that. Bup, bup, bup. Right. Is that going to work? No, I probably have to set my board rate to something like 19200. Shall we see? No. 3800. I'll try again. Aha, we have some comms. So you can see what I had to do there. I kind of just trialed and errored until I got some comms. 80, okay, perfect. We're in a good position. Now, the easiest way to do this, and I'm going to load up my web browser here. I'm just going to pop onto my YouTube channel, which is somewhere in here, and all the associated junk that YouTube tries to show you. Dun, dun, dun. There we go. I have a video about Good morning, this. guys. Okay, so the great thing about this video, I give a, number one a full description, but I've also got a whole lot of commands, which I'm just going to pop into a notepad here. And by all means, you guys do the same thing because essentially we're going to configure this little Bluetooth module to talk and you can see what I'm doing here. I'm copy pasting all these relevant commands across into the system which is going to connect well, this Bluetooth module through to my crossfire and just for good measure I'm going to do a quick search what that's going to do is turn around and oh no, not quite I've got to do a few more commands um, Basically, what I'm going to do is have a quick search for my Crossfire module, which the AT Enquire, bang, and there you go. And you can see we've got 
4C88 and I've now already, because I've copy pasted from my setup, that's the Bluetooth address, you've got to kind of match yours up. And I'm now going to pair this module through, Ooh, that was positive, and boom. And finally, I'm going to say initialize a link. And I should, if all goes well, there you go. Data is flowing. So what that means, these two, via that Bluetooth module down there, are now talking. Fantastic. So what I can do now, I can close this down. And I'm going to disconnect that module. I must keep that one aside because that's now configured to talk. Now, here's where things get interesting. Okay, recently, my fly dream released a new firmware for this unit and it's something that you do definitely want to get onto this now the reason being so what it does is when they first released it it only enabled you to connect via that side and it was a bit of a pig because to get the Mavlink data in you had to rewire all sorts of connectors they've now enabled the facility on this to do it on this port which means we can repurpose the programming module a little bit later. I'm going to show you how you do that. So, I will grab my trusty USB lead down here. And if we take a look here, we plug in. And I'm hoping ooh, it's alive. Right, so we can see it's all powered up and showing its display. First thing we want to do is go through on this particular version because I know this is not new enough to do this and I'm going to go through to the board rate option make sure it's on 38400 because if it's not it's not going to be able to be reflashed so I'll set it to that and off we go now on my desktop I have the crossfire flashing tool which is the MFD update I'm going to select this through to the mini AAT uh, do you think I know what port it is it's probably something weird because they don't auto detect the connected ports so I'm gonna go through this whole long setup of ports you know isn't it it looks like I'm on com32 so that's why I set that to com32 over here and I'm gonna choose the file which is the v194 and higher and magically if I click update this will hopefully <laughs> oh, that that looks positive. <laughs> it's going. <laughs> and magic. It's done. And I can close it off. Now, what's absolutely key about this, if you take a look here, if I go through on here and I go all the way down, I don't know if you can see it on that screen. I've got an L board rate and an R board rate. Effectively, I can set the port speed for that port or that port. Now, I'm going to be repurposing this particular wire to do the connection so what we'll do is I'm going to edit the L board rate and for crossfire you have to use 57600 and for those of you who are observant you'll notice when I configured the module over here I told it to go to 57600 so that has now been set and I will exit the menu and I'm going to do a magic thing called powering down which in this case is dead easy because I'm just going to unplug that now this is where things get interesting what you'll notice here we have on the back of the USB program a whole lot of things we've got VCC TX RX and ground VCC TX RX and ground and on the back of that we've got VCC TX RX and ground so you can kind of get where I'm getting to now <laughs> changing this is quite simple Basically, all we have to do at this point is pop each of these individual pins out because it's not a like for like swap. So if I took that and I swapped these pins out and I put ground to ground, VCC to VCC on this module, and then the associated TX and RX on this, which if I check here, so RX is white and TX is yellow, to the associated pins, What's going to happen? I plug them into here and magically it will just start working with a D link. So, shall we give that a try? Um, typically, I've left my things behind. One second, let me grab them. No, I don't know where they are.
and I am back! Okay, so, the name of the game here, you're going to need something sharp like this, and essentially what I'm going to do is pop out one pin at a time. That's exactly what I'm doing here. I've taken out the ground, well, the VCC, and I'm going to pop it into VCC over here. Now, normally, what I would suggest you did is actually put them back into the right order inside the black container, but for speed of demo I'm just going to pop them out one at a time and largely because I'm actually this track is destined for a different Bluetooth module and my end game is not to basically put everything away so VCC and ground are now connected and TX which is what did I say TX is the white one sorry no TX is the yellow one right here I need to check my eyes I'll take the yellow one and I'm going to put TX to TX There we go, we're nearly there. These things, typically there's always one pin. That's really hard to get up. It's never easy, because I'm now stuck with one pin over here that doesn't want to play ball because the plastic's gone in. Let me try again. There you go. Ah, got him out. Okay. Yes, and the radio is complaining. Right, so we now have all of those various bits plugged in and connected. So the, the theory here is if I plug this into the left side, which I'm going to do, and I'm just wondering where on earth I've got a battery. I don't have a battery, so let me find one for you. Aha! I have a battery now. So the theory here is if I plug this in, and it's now booted up and I'm anticipating you can see that's beginning to flash and what that should do is now bind in theory to the crossfire if I did everything correctly and is it getting there nothing at the moment oh, this is how it goes in a demo isn't it So the question is, did I put my TX and RX the wrong way around? Because I would have thought that should work. Maybe I need to have a plane connected. That is always a possibility because if there's no data being sent because of the model, that's always a strong possibility. And again, I'm without a battery. There we go. I knew I'd put one aside. Okay, we now have a data link. And there you go, magic. You can see I've now got a D-link showing the data, and that's because I didn't have a model attached, so there was no data to send. But the end result, a small repurposing of the existing cable, bang, 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 and it's talking. Now, at that point, everything just works. Um, you know, I, I can go fly, I can do a track eater. I'm going to have to do some stuff like I've got this little mount for putting a Doc King on here. This one's destined for a friend, this tracker. But you can see it's quite easy to do. You know, this, this was really not complicated to get running. Uh, as long as you wire the correct pins in, you guys can have a tracker in next to no time. So in my opinion, this is fantastic. It is so easy to get running. Hopefully this somewhat jumbled video We'll give you guys a clue of how you tackle this because it's really not actually that hard once you understand so um yeah there you go have fun guys enjoy